Hi students, uh, testing, testing. Uh, this is Mr. Lim Kok Cheng. Mr. Lim Kok Cheng. Just to show you that it is me uh, before we go on with our first ever uh, YouTube videos due to the current situation. So whatever it is, please, please stay put, okay? And be careful with your surroundings, especially with the uh, virus situation. Uh, just be safe, okay? All right. So let's start our first uh, online lecture. Not really a lecture, it's just a video that I make for you guys and hopefully that you can uh, play this back multiple times if you would like to do the uh, exercise and examples uh, yourself as a practice I think it would be better this way and uh, maybe uh, after this we will be using um, Cisco Wayback okay? maybe like two hours um, during your official lecture time where we can use it for question and answers session uh, rather than you know um, Spending, spending, spending more time uh, hogging the bandwidth uh, where everyone logs in. So you can watch these videos, you can read your slides, and then uh, you can analyze what you need to learn. And then during the session, we'll do some question and answers where we will we will try to solve uh, any miss any part that uh, you don't really understand. Okay. So enough of that. Okay. So let's go straight to the first short video. I'm going to break this down into a few short videos. Okay. Uh, we will talk about structure, okay, structure. I know one of your section we have already covered structure, but let me repeat so that you can you can use it again, okay? All right, so enough of my face. Okay, right, I'm going to close this. All right, so uh, as you can see, okay, this is the slide, module tree structures. You can get it from uh, the Google Drive that I've uh, given you, okay? And... Uh, and uh, I think the rest is readable. You can actually read this when it comes to the formality of how the how the structure works. Okay, how the structure works. But before we go deeper into the chapter, I'm going to show you a very short example of why we need to, do, to use structure. Okay, why we need to use structure. When will we use structure? And how beneficial will structure be when we uh, put it to practice? Okay, so without further ado, let's go to our favorite online compiler. Okay, so I'm gonna make this large. Okay, so you can see here is my basic uh, programming framework. Okay, so first of all, consider this scenario. Okay, consider this scenario. We have um, say 90 of you, 90 students in your class, in my class. Okay, 90 of you. And for each one of you, I have to get your details, like for example, maybe your name, your ID, your. Um, Quiz 1 marks, quiz 2 marks, quiz 3 marks, uh, quiz 4 marks, your midterm examination marks, your lab marks, and also your assignment marks, okay, for example. But let's take three, three uh, simple parameters here, okay. Let's say I'll need to get your um, name, right. I will get your quiz 1, and I'll take your midterm marks. Let's take three. So what's going to happen if I would store these three values, if I do it... Uh, if I program it, okay, so first of all, we can use string obviously, okay, in C++ and I'm going to put string name Right, secondly, maybe I would like to have um, Sorry Float quiz Quiz one for example and another one which is midterm Midterm marks, right, so I have three so I have these three identifiers, okay, three variables that I can use to store. I can use to store your name, your quiz one, and your meter marks. The only problem here is I can store only one student's particulars at a time, okay. And I have ninety of you, nine zero, and I need to have ninety, okay. So what we can do to improve this structure next is basically I think you have guessed it. We can use array, correct? I don't know why I asked you correct, because you cannot answer me, but uh, just for fun. <laughs> okay, so I have 90, and for Q1, I have 90, and for midterm, I'll have 90. Problem solved, correct? Okay, so I can now fit in 90 names. I can have 90 Q1. Quiz one, I can have 90 meter marks. So I can store a total of 270 uh, uh, batches of data. Okay, so I have 90 batches, sorry, I have 90 set of data. Each one of you will have three personalized data, which is your name, your Q1, and your meter. 
in this case okay but as you can see we of course we can do we can do this yeah you can stay we can, we can store um all the data in array for any of you but they are still separated identifiers aren't they okay i have to i have to attack i, I use the word attack or, or, or i have to approach okay i have to approach storing the name by having three separate array variables I have to use name, I have to use Q1, and I have to use meter, which is good. But the only problem now is you can see that actually name, string name, is not tied to Q1. Q1 is not tied to meter. It's not tied to meter. All right. So they are all three separate array variables. Variables. And this is where we can use structure to improve this. We can use structure to improve this. And how would we improve it with structure? Okay, very simple. Okay, so now here is how we do it with array. For structure, it's very simple. First of all, you need to know that there is a keyword called struct, okay, which is to create structure. And then you have to create a structure name. It can be any name. It can it just that it, it follows the convention of an identifier which is alpha numeric okay so for example in this case I call my uh, structure student and the struct and the framework goes from here which is an open curly braces and a closed curly braces and I can put a semicolon and this is basically this is structure okay and what I can do next is to fill in all the three from here I'm just going to copy this and paste it here I can use control C control V which is my normal behavior but I just want to show you the action of copy paste um, okay so I have a structure student string name and I have float Q1 and I have float meter in this occasion there is no need for me to use array in the structure yet because what I'm doing here is basically I'm creating some sort of like a template like a template okay like for example if I have a template for a human being okay of the basic uh, basic stuff on a human being okay I would have a, a template to know uh, their height their weight their age date of birth right maybe race religion and so on and in this case I'm creating a template for the students for my students and I would like to, the requirements to follow what data I would like to acquire from each student so I create a template called structure okay and struct is keyword to create a structure struct student and in my um, structure I will have string name float q1 float meter I can add more like float q2 or Q3, right? If I want to, but I'll just stick it to stick to Q1. Okay, I can add final exam. I can add so many other things in this structure. Okay, and it can be of different data type, right? I can add one more, maybe integer and age. Okay, or enrollment date or whatever it is. So I have struct student age. Okay, and this is basically. The structure that I'm creating but structure is not declared in any function as you can see here I'm showing showing you the example where I put this in main because I just want you to compare with the earlier variables uh, array variables that we have done but in reality this should be placed anywhere right anywhere there is that is out of any functions so you can see now right okay this is structure i will remove this and this is what we have if you compile this of course right there is no problem at all okay yes. we have the structure yes yes, yeah. yes. my son is here actually just uh, sorry guys <laughs> 
I, I'll try to I'll try to create uh, better videos in the future. This is my 